Now, I'm glad you're here and I'll just talk you through the Heart of the City project. Um, just for those of you that are outside Sheffield uh, or need reminding, um, Sheffield is England's fourth largest city, just about 600,000 people are calling Sheffield their home. I think the overall um, sort of travel to work area is about 1.4 million people. Consumer wise, it's over 2 million. Um, we've got a very strong student population and we've got some fantastic recent investments into the city. And I, and I put this up because this project has got to be looked at within the context of the city and, and what the city uh, has in terms of its overall economy. Again, we've got a we've got a really fantastic city, um, lots of attributes. The outdoor city brand is is something that we are promoting um, and you can see some images of what What's going on in terms of that outdoor opportunity, how the outdoor links into the city centre, um, advanced manufacturing and the like. The heart of the city project itself um, is, is what it says on the tin. It is slap bang in the middle of Sheffield city centre. And again, to give you an idea of of um, the context and its, its proximity to other places, you can see from this slide, the, the, the proximity to the railway station, to Sheffield Hallam University, to the University of Sheffield and other major landmarks within the city centre. There's an overview of the scheme itself. Um, it's about 1.5 million square feet overall in terms of development. Uh, and we already realised um, when we started out on delivering this particular master plan that the world was changing and it wasn't about retail anymore. It was about individually designed and repurposed buildings, new buildings, enlivened streets, public spaces and importantly green space. And even this image that you see on the slide now, it's changed already. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but this section here on towards the, the right hand side of the image has already changed. Our plans have already changed now with most of this being taken up by a new public park, which will be delivered over the course of the next 12 months. The an important point here is to really talk about how local authorities can step into places where it's difficult for others to do so. I'll talk a bit, go into the, the, the history of the, the, the scheme in a moment and the different master plans, but this did start out with a developer uh, at, the, at the heart of it all. Um, but that developer could not make it work. It couldn't get the, um, the development metrics that it needed to proceed with the scheme to work. And in 2013, we parted company with that developer and the council then went, went alone uh, from 2014 onwards to get this scheme delivered. But lots of lots of local authorities look at what Sheffield's been doing in this area. Lots of private sector bodies look at what Sheffield has been doing in this area because ultimately we're still creating a great investment opportunities. But the actual development process at the front end of that is challenged uh, and it's challenged because of uh, low rental values for one thing it's challenged because of the the economy as a whole the reason why one of the reasons why Hammerson couldn't make it work uh, before we parted company at the end of 2013 was a, as a result of the, the the global financial crash in 2007-2008 and therefore we could have sat there as a, as a city council we could have sat just waiting for somebody else to come along at some point in time but we realized we couldn't leave a major site here in the middle of Sheffield without anything happening uh, on it. And so the council decided that it would step forward and it would become the developer and take the development risk in order to make this work. And in doing so, we've taken on on board private sector partners. We're working with the private sector in order to, to deliver the project. It is all about independence. It's about flagship retailers. It's about entertainment and experiences, and it's about modern workspace. So Sheffield 
famously used to have the little mesters at yards where where individual tradespeople would produce their component of of cutlery or jewellery or, or metalworks or whatever it might have been uh, and we, we've taken that um, that little mesters idea in the the rebirth of things like places like Leah's Yard and um, but we're also we're applying it across the across the piece so it's not just about individual workers it's also about global corporates so it's everything from the likes of what will be taking place in Leah's Yard which I'll talk about later all the way through to big organizations like uh, HSBC. And just to give you an idea of the timescales that this project has been working on, it started as an idea at the back end of the 1990s. So we're 30 years on since since the um, the original ideas for what was then called the new retail quarter uh, came to came to be, which then started to develop during the during the 2000s and then into the 2010s when I got involved back in 2013 and now we're into the 2020s. So, you know, these these schemes and this is a we shouldn't forget this is the making of a large part of a major city in the UK. So things do take time, but where we are, where we're at now, we're making great progress and we'll 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 talk about that uh, when I get to those slides. Just to give you an idea of the previous plans, um, the one in the, the sort of top left was part of the original sort of concept plans that developed at the end of the, the 1990s. Um, and there's various images here that since then are the, the, the bottom, um, bottom right hand corner was was how the thing was conceived in the first instance. It was a it was a project that was a, re, a number of regeneration projects in Sheffield City Centre. Uh, um, it went through various iterations, various master plans. Even when I got involved in it and was dealing with Hammerson, who were the then developers. And there's an image at the centre bottom of the screen, which is Pinston Street looking up Cambridge Street. Um, even when I got involved in this scheme, I think they were on to scheme Z. The current, the architect that had produced those plans was on scheme Z. So it already started to run out of the alphabet in terms of the number of iterations of the master plan that had been produced. And the images uh, top centre, uh, top right and bottom left uh, are schemes that we developed around uh, the year 2015. Um, which were all iterations of the previous ideas. It was pretty much retail based. It was all about retail. So even, you know, six years ago, um, retail was was still seen as a, a as a, a lead um, sector for regeneration. And oh boy, how times have changed in just those very few years. But it gives you an idea of the the amount of thinking, the amount of ink that went on to drawings that never saw the light of day in terms of reality. Um, a lot of work over 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 decades. And the current plan, really, what we're de developing now is um, is something that, that I developed back in 2017. And in the summer of 2017, I stood in the middle of the site trying to work out how on earth we could make this project happen. And after knocking around a few ideas, I, I, I put together a, a development brief, which is effectively the vision for, for what we are delivering now. And it was very much about the first of the new. We started to think about, well, what is the retail of the future? We, we, we described it as the high street from the internet up. Um, but as well as being the first of the new, I reflected on the background of the city and the characteristics of the city. And looked at the history and there's a there's a map there from 1832 and and looking at those old maps and looking at how the city developed led me to think you know what we need to stick with the existing street pattern so all those previous plans that i showed you were very much uh, about ripping up the existing street layout and effectively putting in sort of mini shopping malls um, uh, around the area the seven hectare site that we've got but i thought no this is we've got to think think more about the existing street pan, the history of Sheffield, the fact that people have been used to walking those streets for hundreds of years 
and therefore let's not rip it all up let's look at how we can can add to and enhance what what was there and what had been developed over over hundreds of years so the very awful sketch on the left hand side was my initial um sort of uh, word based uh, sketch of um of of how i saw the master plan and i labeled all the various all the various blocks and i put a table together that that kind of described what those what those various blocks could be and and it's interesting to note the big sort of thick green line that runs through what were then block g and block e which has effectively now become um the the new pounds park that we're planning to to develop so i always i always envisage some sort of green route and green artery through the scheme um the plan on the right hand side was what our urban design team then took they took my very blocky very um very awful word based uh plan and they turned it into something that looked a little bit more like a like a master plan and and from that we we worked with queensbury and the architectural team to develop the um the scheme that that we'll talk about today and queensbury i want to mention queensbury because the council is the driving force behind this scheme um it is act it is taking the developer role it is taking the development risk but the council is not a developer so we had a full-blown um oju competition back in 2015 to bring on a development partner and for those of you that are, are into procurement and clearly everything's like changed now in terms of the the, the uh, us leaving the eu but the then um, need to advertise schemes in the official journal of the european union um, we went through a competitive dialogue process on that particular procurement route because we didn't know at the time whether we were going to be able to get a developer on board to actually take that development risk or whether we needed to employ a developer effectively as a consultant helping the council to deliver in a development uh, mode and as we went through that competitive dialogue procurement process we realized that the council would have to be the one to take the development risk and the winner of that competition was Queensbury uh, coming on board as a development manager uh, helping the council with um, the development expertise that, that Queensbury had from their years of doing regeneration schemes across the UK. And given that the council stepping in, it, the council was not doing this scheme just because it was a nice thing to do or it thought it could make a load of money out of out of real estate. Far from it, the council's actually taking a development loss on this project which it is recovering over a 40 year period. So this is absolutely about regeneration. And we looked at the, um, the, 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 the economic outputs that we plan to get out of the scheme. Oxford Economics as consultancy um, went through the project to look at what it would mean in terms of the economy. And there's some headlines there a 3.7 billion pounds worth of economic activity um, by 2030 and obviously economic activity going beyond 2030 but that was a, a measure point that we that we took so that's a massive boost to uh, an economy which is currently around 11 12 um, billion pounds in Sheffield so it's a major a major boost to the local economy 7,000 uh, jobs of which some of them were protected jobs um, by ensuring that we were delivering workspace in the city that people wanted. It's actually helped to trigger further developments in neighbouring areas. So what we're now seeing is, is other uh, regeneration projects owned by other developers uh, on the periphery and around the edge of, of our scheme uh, coming forward, uh, projects to come forward on Pinston Street, um, on Wellington Street, uh, and equally what the new owners of the moor will do with um, with the further development of the moor. So massive, massive uh, impact to the economy. And as a local authority, that's why we're doing it. The local authority have got um, duties around um, uh, making the most of the economy for the citizens of, of Sheffield. 
and therefore it was, it this was all about the economy for us in terms of um, uh, bringing forward this scheme. It's a mixed use scheme. It's all about these things, workspace, living, leisure, culture, shopping, food and drink and hotels. Shopping has, is now a minor part of, of the scheme compared to those earlier, uh, earlier master plans. And that's all because we all shop differently now. We all walk around with a department store in our pockets. We've got access to the world in terms of retail from our from our mobile phones. So retail is changing. Retail isn't dead. High street retailing is, isn't dead. It's evolving. At the end of the day, we still want the experience of of meeting people, of, of, of talking to people that are selling products to have that exchange, that social exchange, touch and feel goods as well. So it's not dead, but it's changing. And we've recognized um, that change with this project. And interestingly enough, it's if we had created those sort of mini mal ideas that were in those previous master plans, we'd probably have a real problem now. And 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 the scheme is effectively future proofed because of the way we've built and designed um, the, the project. So in terms of the, the, those various aspects of the scheme, um, you can see how we're actually delivering those. So we've got grade A office space, flexible working environments, co-working opportunities. We got the hotel, potentially a second hotel that could happen around the Pounds Park site. Um, but we've got Radisson, Radisson Blue coming to town uh, with work starting on site next month. We've got living, we've got Kangaroo Works, private sector developer actually taking forward that scheme. And the council itself is delivering 52 uh, new apartments. We've still got the shopping, we've got leisure and culture. And the leisure and culture is really really important. That's a, a thing that I think we will see growing now in, in, in city centres, along with the food offer and the food and drink scene. So here's that master plan. All, all the existing streets that existed are still there, except some of them now are pedestrianised, but they all remain public highway. They all remain in the public realm. They are not privatised. Um, quite a lot of schemes like this around the country have ended up with the actual streets being uh, privatised, being closed, stopping up orders effectively put on those streets to stop them up for public access. Um, but all of these streets are are still uh, public highway, despite the pedestrianisation. The one element that we did stop up was Charter Square. So Charter Square, for those that um, are familiar with Sheffield, used to be a great big roundabout um, on the middle of Furnival Gate there. Uh, but that space, that new landscape space on Charter Square uh, is actual private space that now belongs to the council. Um, but it used to be a uh, public highway. But that's the one element that we that we did stop up um, because that is all part of the Grosvenor House um, uh, uh, block, the, the, the Grosvenor House um, investment opportunity in the future. But all the other streets are are still public highway. The delivery actually this this slide's already out of date because we're, we're working at such a pace now and the delivery is is happening so fast that some of these um these sites that are sort of colored in dark blue sort of waiting to happen are actually now they're now on site and and lydia herself is working on what as a project we still call uh, block h but elshaw house cambridge street collective bethel chapel around uh, what we're currently calling Colpit yard in the middle of the, the middle of the plan there is now on site. So we're making great progress. Um, Grosvenor House and what will now be branded the furnace uh, all complete. 95% let. So despite the four shopping the, um, retail spaces that are still to let, that is 95% let. So that's a tremendous, um, tremendous news for the city in that in, in completing this, it's, it's virtually let. And I think the the re remaining shopping units on, on Grosvenor House will let once these other blocks are, are, are well into construction because retail occupiers really want to know that this thing is happening and is being delivered before before committing, despite the early commitments that we've had from like the likes of Weekday and Monkey and, uh, and Marmadukes and indeed um, New World Trading with the, um, the Furnace brand. So, so great progress happening. Um, 
Here's Pounds Park that I talked about earlier, that, that sort of green corridor through the site, which has now just got bigger. So I'm really pleased that that's happened, given the ideas back in 2017. Kangaroo Works is being delivered by the private sector. We did look at doing that, that, um, that project ourselves, but we realised that the public sector aspect of this was about doing the heavy lifting. It was, you know, the difficulties of dealing with facade retentions and listed buildings and the like. It all put a big dent in a, in a developer's development appraisal. So the, that's why the council's doing what it's doing. It's doing the heavy lifting, which means things like Kangaroo Works that could be delivered by the private sector because the development appraisals worked. And equally on Pounds Park, this building here called Stirrings Place and this one called Carlisle House, these are uh, development plots that we will release to the private sector. The council won't won't deliver those. We'll we'll release those sites for the private sector to deliver because those will be viable um, viable sites in their own right with the council doing all the heavy lifting with the rest of the scheme. Oops, right, so just a, an image of the completed um, Grosvenor House which I think looks fantastic with the new Charter Square. And it's it's quite a, quite a, uh, I, sh I wish I had a, a previous picture here because we had the old um, de sort of derelict Grosvenor Hotel in the, on this location and a, and a horrible roundabout with a horrible subway underpass there before. Um, I must try and get a picture of that because it's, it would be good to see before and after, but this is a massive improvement from where we were. So a little bit on Grosvenor House. Um, uh, yeah, the, the councillor's developer, strategic development partner, Queensbury, designed by Leonard Design Architects. Um, I'm really proud that a local authority um, has delivered this building, and particularly when you see the inside of Grosvenor House. And that's that picture on the on the right hand side. It's not the best shot, but it's inside the atrium. But it's actually phenomenal space that's being created inside HSBC. So uh, I'm really proud to have been associated uh, with that. There's a sort of uh, ground floor plan. You can see how it's been leased so far with HSBC, Marmaduke's Weekday Monkey and CMS, the law firm that took the rest of the office space there. And then to the left, we've got New World Trading with their uh, furnace um, uh, food and drink unit, which will be opening next month. That's the trading house. That is the foot now what's being branded the furnace. And even this shot's moved on from when we took this. This is now these um, these service calls. They're all wrapped up now. You can't see them anymore. Um, so really, you know, just fascinating how we've made tremendous progress. It's funny how, you know, decades, decades went before in trying to get anything started. But once we did start, we've really we've really moved moved forward we've really put our foot to the floor as it were press the accelerator pedal um in order to to keep up that momentum from delivering grosvenor house and, and get these um, get these other other projects underway that's how from that construction site shot that's how these things should look uh when they're finished there's an internal shot there from one of the flats um, that we're building um, and you can see again how we've we've kept the old, we're linking the old with the new and creating something really special and really special for Sheffield with mainly here residential um, space above uh, retail units, except for the, the little office building that we've got there, um, 3000 square feet office on the left hand side of the picture. There's a ground floor uh, view of that plan. This is the Isaacs building, the other one that's under construction at the moment with Galliford Tri. Again, um, mixing the old with the new, the facade retention in this case on Pinston Street. Very complex, very difficult to achieve given the um, the age of those facades. But um, we've managed to, well, hats off to Galliford Tri for, for dealing with um, uh, a tricky, tricky design solutions there to make that work but delivering this new office space uh, above retail space. There's the ground floor leasing plan for the retail units. Kangaroo Works I mentioned being delivered by 
Angelo Gordon and a joint venture with a firm called Ridgeback Group uh, on site at the moment. Um, and looking forward to 360 odd new apartments being delivered right in the centre of Sheffield. Cubo, now this building, 38 Carver Street, in some of our original plans, we um, we were getting ready to knock this thing down. But given the whole sustainability agenda at the moment, we thought, hang on a minute, well, it just doesn't make sense to knock the building down, release all that embedded carbon, and then go and build another building in its place. So we found a solution to to reuse it, reuse the building. It's got Architect XXX on there. It's actually Leonard Design Architects that worked on that um, building for um, for Cubo, and that um, that's now uh, opening up. Uh, again, the opening up got delayed with uh, COVID restrictions, but um, you'll see all their social media at the moment, and um, and they're welcoming tenants to that space. So that's uh, fantastic news. Leah's Yard. This is really special. This is uh, Grade two star listed building on Cambridge Street that sat there for those decades, literally falling apart. Um, and we've got uh, uh, RF joinery on site at the moment, stitching that building back together again and doing a fantastic job of restoring the building to a shell standard. And that will then be taken on board with the, the new tenants. Um, with further work being done on that building to to actually fit it out. Here's an image of the back of it on the left hand side with some new build being incorporated into that uh, into Leah's yard uh, with a view as to how it might um, relate to uh, Colpit Yard uh, as part of the work that that Lydia is already uh, working on um, with Elshaw House and Cambridge Street Collective. So it's really exciting um, to see that now come forward with 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 really really exciting uses. If you look at if you look at the Leah's Yard um, social media, you'll see exactly what they what the guys are planning to deliver in that location. Not the best shot of the NCP car park on Wellington Street, um, but if you go to site now, you'll see the new cladding that's been erected. All the vertical um, ver vertical box section aluminium uh, uh, screening that's now across the cladding. We've taken off all the old GRP panels. The architect for this was actually Sheffield City Council's capital delivery service um, and it's looking great and, and we're looking forward to to bringing forward the leisure uses in the ground floor units of that building and we're getting leisure inquiries left right and centre at the moment so leisure is going to be a, a key part of what we see in city centres um, moving moving to the future. And there's a ground floor plan of, of that you can see the size of those units underneath the NCP car park. So it gives provides a real opportunity for for some exciting leisure leisure uses in that building. Cambridge Street Collective just going back on to Cambridge Street. Um, some of you may remember Henry's bar. Uh, you can see it in the middle middle picture there and Dina, which is in the in the in the white rendered building. Well, that's now the new going to be the new new food hall and the exciting project that Lydia is actually going to be building and this is absolutely this is just really fantastic I think this is going to be something that is very much um, linked to what Sheffield is all about and it's going to be you know bringing the best of, uh, of food and other experiences into the the, the, the centre of Sheffield and some high-end dining to boot as well so really exciting project really looking forward to this um, being completed and again originally a lot of this was all planned to be demolished and it's it's when I stood in the middle of the site back in 2017, I thought we can't we can't demolish this stuff. We've got to do something special with it. And I'm so pleased that that's now uh, now coming to fruition. And again, a ground floor leasing plan of of that location. An Elshaw House, again, one of uh, Lydia's projects now, uh, one of the region's first net zero carbon office buildings that we or net zero carbon ready. It will actually be if we offset, it will actually be net zero. I think we've got to plant about 30,000 trees to actually offset the the remaining carbon in the building, but it's it will be net zero ready in terms of the decarbonizing of the grid. So ultimately that will be a net zero um, building um, and an office building being designed with uh, openable windows. You know, who'd ever thought we'd be opening windows in office space again? 
So again, really exciting. And the council, rather than sometimes the development world, would wait for pre-lets before actually embarking on these projects and getting on with them. But given that we wanted to maintain momentum, the council decided that we would actually build this speculatively because we believe in the fact that we're providing fit for purpose space, even in a post COVID world, uh, given that it will be net zero, it meets all the environmental, social and governance credentials that businesses are now looking to bring to the fore. So we've decided to get on with it and, um, you know, it's bringing work uh, to Sheffield in terms of construction jobs and it will be there then as a as a as an opportunity for businesses to to locate into this when when they're ready. Bethel Chapel back onto Cambridge Street. Um, uh, out just finalising occupier bids at the moment for this building. Um, but the plan is that it should be event space, live entertainment venue, rooftop bar. You can just about see people on the on the roof terrace on the left hand side of the picture. So again, we've we've got some great interest in this building. So we're trying to finalise those bids and then we'll be able to um, uh, to name an operator for this building. Uh, and again, this is what's currently being worked on and being brought forward from a shell perspective at, at this point in time. And once we've got the operator on board, we can deal with a fit out. So really exciting and really good progress being made after all these years. And Radisson, so uh, Sheffield's. When you talk to hotel operators these days, they don't talk about stars. So we're, we're used to talking about five star and four star and three star and two star and so on. But the, the hotel world talks about value, mid market, um, upper scale, upper, upper upscale and luxury. And so this is a upper upscale um, a hotel uh, offer, Radisson Blue, just below the, the luxury or what you might consider five star. So it's between a sort of four star and a five star. Um, and bringing a fantastic hotel offer uh, to Sheffield City Centre with an exciting rooftop bar and restaurant. And um, uh, McLaughlin and Harvey should be on site next month um, getting ready to to build this, which is just absolutely brilliant news again, uh, opening 2023. So after all those decades of of planning, of, of uh, tearing plans up, putting them in the bin, starting all over again, it, you can see how 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 rapidly we've now got to uh, got to, to delivery um, with most of this all being ready for 2023. There's a sort of ground floor leasing plan of that block. And at the other end of the scheme, the other end of that particular block is uh, the Gaumont, what used to be the Gaumont Cinema many years ago. Um, a lot of people will recognise it as the or embrace nightclub building. Currently that red frame building on Barker's Pool. So we're, we're doing a complete facade uh, replacement. We're bringing in um, living wall, green wall panels into this. So we're, we're increasing the sustainability ratings of that of that building. Probably leisure on the upper floors with retail and food and beverage on the ground floor. Um, but again, it will be a great space in, in, in Sheffield City Centre and move towards that sustainability goal and, and, and green goal as well. And I had to mention this. I couldn't not. This was actually planned um, to be a, a, a really good news story. It was a good news story last year with John Lewis signing a new 20 year lease through to 2040. Um, but unfortunately, in March of this year, uh, they decided that they were going to or they're planning to close the store once they have consulted with all of their partners. So so sad news um, for us, but equally uh, an opportunity, an opportunity to to think of doing something really different, either with the building or without the building. Um, there's 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 merits of the 1960s architecture. Some might disagree, um, but I'm open to all ideas and the council's open to all ideas. And currently we're receiving uh, all sorts of ideas from the public and from different companies. Um, but we will go through a process of, of, of proper engagement with people and then some sort of consultation process, probably in the autumn, uh, in order to ultimately come up with a new delivery plan for this for this site, for this building, uh, ready for uh, moving forwards with it 
from 2022 onwards. So sad in in many ways, sad for the the the, the people that are uh, losing their jobs from that location. But I'm sure um, you know people will be able to. Some people will, will pick up new work. Some people might retire. But equally, that the whole location provides for a a new opportunity. And and though it was sort of devastating news back in March, I'm now uh, looking forward as you, if those that you were on the presentation last week, I'm always up for a challenge. And this is yet another challenge that I'm having to deal with. And I'm sure with the input from the Good Focus Sheffield, we'll come up with a great plan um, for this location. And sort of almost last but not least, uh, environmental um, issues. You know, we started to work to LEED standards, BREAM standards. We've got the um, net zero office building, Elshaw House, that, that Lydia and team at Henry Boots will be building for us, um, but also increasing biodiversity, the quality of the public realm, the amount of green space that we're bringing into the scheme, and, you know, to top it all, the park. And where we can, we're also connecting uh, heat loads into the district energy network that, that Sheffield um, should really be proud of, of of having. So lots of environmental credentials. We're doing the best we can here. Although we're constructing, we're trying to construct in a, a in a in a sensitive way and increasing that biodiversity and green space at the same time. Some of the names involved in um, delivery of all of this. There's the overall plan, uh, the current sort of leasing plan. Lots of green space there, as you can see. Lots of marketing. Um, Queensbury heavily involved in that. The marketing point is really important to get the message across of what we're doing, especially as I um, highlighted earlier on. You know, it's taken decades to get here. So getting the message across as to what this is all about is really, really important to, to get get heart of the city in people's minds, both locally, regionally, nationally, in the minds of uh, retail uh, businesses, food and beverage businesses. It's really important. So there's a lot of activity that goes on behind the scenes in terms of um, marketing and PR and communications. And to help with all that marketing, we even em employed uh, local artist Molly Jones to do something a bit different rather than just um, rather than just come up with the usual CGIs that could almost be anywhere. We thought let's get some let's get some illustrations done because people see things in different ways and in terms of that marketing and uh, and branding of the scheme we wanted to be able to to touch the senses of people in in all sorts of different ways so so we employed molly if you look at the website um uh look at our our, our website for the project you'll see um more of molly's illustrations but i think she's done a great job in in helping to depict what this is and try and bring it to life in a in a slightly different way so that's it. Hopefully that um, gives you an overview of what's behind the hoardings, uh, what's going to come. Um, we've got best part of another couple of years to to get through to the end of it. But that's rapid progress given where we were in the previous decades. And I think if there's time now, Lydia, just a few minutes, if there are any questions, we can take some questions. Yeah, fabulous. Um, that was amazing. I think it's so interesting to hear what's what's happening in the city centre, especially as a young person that lives in Sheffield. I feel like this is just what the city has needed for a long time. And yeah, thank God you found that momentum and we're building everything now. So yeah, it's so, so exciting. Um, so we've got a question from Luke, which is, is the new park area a sign that the is a sign that the originally hoped for scale of development is not. Re oh, not realisable. Realisable. Okay. Interesting. Uh, or does it instead show that? Sorry, you read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, Lydia. Uh, doing a double hander one on this one. Um, I, no, I think it's not that it's not realisable. I think that that site could be fully developed out like Kangaroo Works. So the demand for that site, I think, is is heightened now. And given the heavy lifting that I talked about, um, you, we could have put the whole site on the market and somebody would have bought it and done another done another kangaroo works or something like that. So it's not that it's not realisable. It's that we've taken a an active decision um, not to develop and, and, and actually to bring in more green space. 
and and that the thoughts around that green space we were developing even before covid happened so even before we'd ever heard about covid we were thinking about um not not building and and in, in improving the environment so um yes the public realm and open space is important i think covid has highlighted that and it's highlighted how we now value these things um but i think it also just shows that we were kind of ahead of the game in our thinking yeah very yeah very true i think everyone being locked up in their houses and yeah covid has just shown that we need space and we want to get out and especially after covid i think there'll be a lot more of that so i'm definitely glad that there's there's going to be you know a, a public and park in in why is it called pounds park by the way can i ask yeah absolutely yeah so what we it's actually um named after sheffield's first chief fire officer given that the site used to have the fire station on it. Oh, I see. And all the names, all those names that I that I referenced on and the, on the master plan, all the names, we actually worked with uh, Joined Up Heritage Sheffield, um, local heritage group for the city. Uh, and we 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 asked them to think about, think of the names for the sites that link to the history of those individual sites. So all of those names link to what was originally developed there in Victorian times and beyond. Oh, amazing. That's good that you've got a, a bit of history in there. Yeah, and what, um, what, guess what we should do and what we will. I think it's on the I think some of the details are on the website where all those names come from. But when the site's developed out, we'll probably have some interpretation boards or some blue plaques as well, which explain the name and explain what used to be there before before the new build yeah amazing that would yeah that would be really good especially just working in the um in the buildings i mean that i'm so glad you came because they're so beautiful like the timbers in the in the roof trusses it's they're just yeah they're really really nice buildings and they've got so much character um so has anyone got anyone any more questions you can unmute yourselves if you want to um oh we've got another dun, 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 dun. How did you envisage the heart of the city will interface with the moor given the new owners? Have you a preference for the reuse of the Debenham site given the strategic importance interface with the development? Yeah, no, good. another good question. So uh, we're fully engaged with the new owners of the moor as we were with the previous owners. Um, but I think uh, New River Retail uh, do have some exciting plans. They've got their full development team looking at the moor at the moment. The Debenhams, so we will we'll work with, we'll, we will work with New River. Um, the council's the freeholder of, of the moor. Uh, it's, it was let out on a long lease, 250 year lease to Scottish widows who then transferred it to Aberdeen who have now transferred it to New River. Um, but there are some sites at the bottom of the moor that are still on short leases. So the engagement with the council will be uh, really important going forward and we do want to um, work with each complement each other at the end of the day because the city centre has got to work as a whole and the council's relationship with New River and how the moor develops and how the heart of the city develops um, we'll we'll do it together we'll, obviously we'll we'll take our developments forward separately but we will we will liaise with each other and talk to each other about making sure that um, we're complementary as much as we can. Clearly, there'll be at times there might be a bit of a scramble for a particular retail uh, operator, but we but we will we will do all of that in a sensible manner going forward. And the preference for the Debenhams um, site, well, um, just like the John Lewis, I've I've got to keep an open mind on this. Um, I think there are leisure opportunities, there are residential opportunities, there are office opportunities. There are there are people that came to see me about that. There are actual uh, developers and investors that have come to see me and talk to me over the last few years about the Debenhams building. Uh, but it's currently in quite a complex ownership structure uh, with M&G and then New River and then the council. Um, so. Uh, those previous ideas weren't weren't able to be unlocked because of that ownership structure. But I think with New River coming on board, there's now an opportunity to unlock all of that and therefore 
uh, see it come forward. And it is it is of strategic importance. And I think the right retail offer still on the on the you know on the ground floor and maybe ground and first floor, I I think would be a preference if I had to kind of, kind of articulate any kind of preference because of the relationship with H and M um, weekday monkey. It's a strong retail corner. It's a bit like a it's a bit like a, it could be a bit like a mini a mini 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 really stretch your brains here, but a mini Oxford Circus in many ways, um, and and therefore. It's important to get the right mix on on that uh, on that corner. Tony, I can see you're typing again. Do you want me to unmute you? Um, I'll unmute you. I don't think I can. Uh, wider opportunities is his question. I think it's Tony's question. Yep. Sorry. Um, yeah, is it possible to give any updates or either wide opportunities within Sheffield, thinking of the Sheffield Castle site specifically um, and links to Kellam Island? The city has a fantastic future in my view. I agree. Yeah, I share I share that uh, that optimism. It has got a fantastic future. Uh, I'm actually the, the lead director for the regeneration of Castlegate now. I took that role on um, back in uh, the end of November last year. So um, I've been uh, requesting funding to work through a, a, a business case, a detailed business case, so that we can get the um, the investment into that site that deals with the sort of gap funding to make it work. So we're, we're on the journey on that now. We've just started that. We've just got the funding in place and I'll be working with stakeholders um, to bring forward some uh, some interesting plans and also be putting an investment case to various funding bodies to help with the gap funding to allow us to take that that scheme forward. So so we are we are moving on that. And also I'm lead director for Future High Street Fund uh, work, which which is looking over the next three years, a program of work to see improvements to Fargate and High Street so that ultimately we've got a whole series of improvements, which will also link to the Connecting Sheffield program, uh, which some of you might be familiar with, um, you know, in, improving uh, transport links and 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 enhancing uh, active travel opportunities within the city centre. So all of those linkages are being made. And with my work on Heart of the City, Fargate, High Street and Castlegate, it all links. So I think I think it's a fantastic future ahead. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Sheffield is going great places. Um, oh, we're typing again. Got another question. Thought I'd, I could unmute people, but maybe I can't. Brilliant presentation. Thank you. Oh, I've done an angry face. Um, yeah, I think we'll end it there. Unless anyone has any more questions, then raise a hand. Um, but we, well, thank you, Nalin, again for doing an amazing presentation. I really appreciate your time and your effort. Um, you know, to speak to everyone and tell everyone what's happening in in our amazing city centre. Um, so thank you for your time and thank you everyone for attending. Um, and I will Sheffield's in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will post this on our YouTube um, if anyone wants to send it to whoever. So thank you again and thank Brilliant. you, Nalin. Thanks a lot. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Bye now. Bye.